Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to another video. A short while ago, I had posted a video dealing with, at least in a light sort of way, the concept of plant chemical warfare. Now, basically, this just means a plant excreting a chemical which would either inhibit other plants of different species from growing anywhere near them, or, of course, prevent things from eating them. And I try to stay away from a lot of the chemical terms, and definitely a lot of the biochemistry, because there's a lot of really big names in that. But if there is something that interests you and you want a little bit more depth of that let me know and i will try and at least incorporate a little bit more of that uh, in videos as this sort of progresses now one of the things i really wanted to do when i first put that up is show you guys a way of dealing with it a simple way of dealing with it, actually and one you probably almost almost all of you probably already know now i am going to go to a fair amount of extent cleaning this tank but that is actually not necessary. I could just leave this as is. But as you know, I am going to be using this aquarium for another experiment coming up dealing with how various filter types can remove ammonia. So, Because I have the ammonium chloride in. So I thought I would just get this clean now. I still will have to obviously empty it and sterilize everything and get as much of whatever is in here as possible out and of course fill the tank with uh, fresh water and then dose it with ammonia and you know the, the rest of that. I'll deal with that as that video comes up. So for this particular video just ignore all the cleaning I'm doing. Now when I had posted that original video a number of people had mentioned that the reason why the plants all died is because I had uh, removed all the fish and let the tanks sit idle and that um, basically meant that the nutrient source for the plants wasn't there anymore. Now I have let this tank sit ever since that video and I have not added any fish to it I've not done any water changes to it so this should also help uh, you know clear up that part of it as well now for most cases like in your in your aquarium at home if you have a plant that's growing better than others and you would like to you know help the other plants along a simple pruning of the plant that's doing uh, so much better than the others and Maybe a little bit extra in the way of water changes is more than enough for almost every situation. This is more of an extreme case, and sometimes this will come up, especially if you have a fair amount of like blackbeard algae or that sort of stuff. It can be uh, quite detrimental to other plants, and it is a good idea to curb it a lot more. And I have had lots of requests about dealing with blackbeard algae, but that is definitely a separate video all by itself, and hopefully I'll get to that. Now, if you remember, I had built this carbon filter uh, quite some time ago and I always meant to give it to you guys uh, a look at how it worked and obviously never got around to it. Uh, so here you go, you get to see it now. This is simply a tower filter. It's an above tank one. Uh, it can be reconfigured to so many different uses. I can put biomedia in this and it's actually a really good style of filter. And in this particular case, I am just going to use it as a carbon filter with a bit of a pre-filter on it just to get rid of some of the stuff that's floating in the tank. And it does an amazing job. Now, obviously, I'm not filling it all the way up because this is only a 15-gallon tank. And actually, this is way more carbon than you need uh, for this as well. But I wanted to get this done quickly uh, so I can get on to those other experiments. Now, one of the things you'll notice is I did not wash the carbon before I put this in here. Now the reason I'm doing that in this particular case is that fine particulate carbon will get in there and very quickly absorb a lot of stuff. And that will also help in uh, speeding up this whole process. Now this were a client's tank, I would uh, pre-wash the carbon, unless of course I had time to explain to them what's going on and they agreed to it. Because all that fine carbon powder will just end up uh, floating to the bottom and sink down into the spaces between the gravel and we'll get taken out in the next gravel vacuum anyway, so it's not really a big deal. In this case here, uh, it'll end up being a little bit of powder in the bottom of the tank, and again, not really much of a problem. I am cleaning this whole thing out in a few days anyway, so it's not such a big deal. Now, a couple important details. First off, if you are going to use carbon in your aquarium, take a small amount of it, add a bit of water to it, and if it doesn't fizz, uh, find a better brand because it's not anhydrous. It's not dry enough and it will not absorb as well as uh, one that does. I know that's not necessarily true for everything, but it is a good sort of rule of thumb. Now the other thing is, with carbon, it absorbs organic molecules. It, and that's exactly what it does. 
It will not take out nitrate by itself, unless of course it's bound to something else. Uh, but that's not usually a problem. Uh, but anyway, it's just something that, that you should keep in mind as well. So this will take care of all those uh, rather large organic molecules that the plant excretes, uh, which are the ones that we're interested in because they're the ones that are going to be preventing other plants from growing and of course uh, other things from eating and all that sort of stuff. And as you can see, this is a day later now and the water is not necessarily clearer, but you'll notice there's a lot less color. Now, if this is going to run for another week, it would actually, you know, it'll actually be crystal clear as well, like no particles in the water. But again, a uh, bit of a time crunch here, so I'm going to only do this for one day. And then I'm going to put the plants in, and I'm going to let them sit. And normally, I think when I, when I did this the last time, uh, it was about two days before I mean, the plants were really dead dead. Uh, this is a day later. And as you can see, they are perfectly fine. And there's going to be one more clip near the end, which is going to be uh, another day and a half, I think. And they're still fine. I will show you some close-ups here in a little bit. And there are no needles uh, floating anywhere in the tank. I also put in a little bit of uh, <laughs> the plant to the right there. I put a little bit of that in there. Uh, the name escapes me at the moment. Uh, Pearlweed, that's it and uh, it is also doing fine. Now, I didn't bother putting any java fern in there because it seemed to be immune, uh, but it was mostly duckweed, which I don't have hardly any of at all anymore, and this plant here, hornwort, which uh, were suffering the most. But hornwort is a wonderful plant uh, in this particular uh, setup because once it starts shedding needles, it is so obvious, and that is something that uh, would be a very quick indicator of this. So I am going to let this run for a few more days after this video is over, uh, just to uh, prove it for sure. And I think I'll leave a little bit of an update for that on Sunday's vlog just to show you. But as you can see, it is doing very well here, and I have not done any water changes on this tank. All I've done is top up the tank. <laughs> and to be a little too anal about this, I decided also instead of using tap water, which may add something into it, I took the water from my dehumidifier and used that to top this up. So that is just pure distilled water and it would not be adding any nutrients or minerals or whatever to the tank, uh, just in case that was a, a possibility. But as you can see, uh, nothing has been done to this other than carbon filtration, uh, cleaning out the plants that were in there, the algae, and um, a bit of a pre-filter on this. So there you go. It's a very easy way of dealing with larger organic molecules that uh, will get in your aquarium from not just plants but from other stuff as well it will it's very good at getting rid of tannic acids if you have driftwood that is um, not cured properly and pretty much any of that sort of stuff as well so here's some close-ups of it you can see there's no needles floating in the tank i did actually end up putting a couple of snails in here as well uh, they're fine and all that's really in there, is besides that little bit of black powder from uh, the carbon, which is obviously easy to get rid of, uh, nothing at all. It's a nice clean tank. Uh, this is the, still the same day. The little bit of algae that's left on there, uh, I obviously could have removed, but it really wasn't necessary to remove any of it. I just wanted it to be clean enough so you guys can see the difference. And you see the pearl weed in the back is perfectly fine as well. So here's the last clip, another day later, and again, no changes. I will, again, leave this up uh, long enough to give you guys a certainty of all this, and then I'm going to take it down and start working on the ammonium chloride experiments. So, as always, if you like this style of video, please like and or subscribe, and always leave me comments below. Uh, carbon's really useful. It's not necessary in most situations, but I do use it, uh, especially in larger aquariums where big water changes are just uh, too much of a hassle, so it does help get rid of some of that uh, color buildup that you get in some tanks as they age and it does give you that clear colorless look that uh, a lot of people like and me personally I prefer a slightly more aged look to it but again this is all just personal preference and it is just one of those tools you can keep uh, if you get a situation where you, you know you need that sort of look to something so thank you very much for watching I will see you in the next video and remember that uh, I will do an update for this on Sunday and thanks for watching